Let's get it going. They said Let's it get it started. Done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. <laughs> Do, 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 da, do, da. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Mike, Mike, Mike. What's up, buddy? Back from Thailand. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Formula One is ruthless as hell, Mike. Always has been. I mean, I don't know any other sport is as cutthroat as Formula One. If you if you're off a couple tenths and they think somebody else can do a couple tenths better, oh, you you're out. You're freaking out of there, man. The latest news as we do our Miami Grand Prix uh, preview. preview for this uh, episode is that Total Wolf is gone full Manson. I mean, full Manson. He's offered this is reported. Now, I don't know. It was reported that he's offered Max Verstappen a hundred and fifty million dollars a year. Not only that, he's offered Adrian Newey a boatload of money. He offered Helmut Marco a suitcase full of money. I mean, he's offering Max so much stuff. I think my socks. He even offered my socks and your tennis shoes. I don't have tennis shoes on. Oh, what you, I got slippers. You got slippers? Well, you're, you're mighty comfortable after coming I am. back. From I'm a, always comfortable. I'm soft, you know and, that. And you're, you're tan and, you know. I know, it's weird. You, did Was there ever a day you weren't drinking? I didn't, I didn't really drink all that much when I was Oh, there. come on. <laughs> there's, no, there's, no, there's no good whiskey there, so... And when I, when I was going through the airport to go to Koh Samui, I was going to stop at the Duty Free and buy a bunch of booze. Yeah. And... There's two. It turns out that the international and domestic are two different zones, and you can't get you can't go to the duty free in the domestic flight. So I wasn't able to get any booze. So wait, but you can get wait what? Well, you can get the booze when you when you land. There's I went to the liquor store. I bought the last two oh. bottles of Bullet, and I I went through those in like a back? couple days. What? Oh, so you brought alcohol to your resort? Yeah, yeah. I went to the liquor store. There's a liquor store. Why, dude? Why didn't you just get the drinks there? Because the they, drinks there, like all they have at the bars cents? there, and the but this is what sucks about Thailand. When you go to the bars, they only have Jack Daniels and Jameson. That's and it. I don't like Jack Daniels. Yeah, I, I like a, I like Bullet. Yeah. Or I, I did get some Maker's Mark once, but I don't like Maker's Mark. Dude, I was there for two weeks. Yeah. All I did, I did, barely, I literally, I barely drank. This episode is brought to you by... A doobie. Is it Dubby or doobie? A <laughs> doobie energy drink. Is it doobie? Remember, getting your doobie energy drink is going to give you more focus, <laughs> more energy, and it's more fun. If Get your doobie today! And I hear there's no marijuana in the doobie. No, there isn't. Why would they call them so... Is it, it must be dubby then. Dude, dude it's doobie. No, Doobie's D O B I E. I think. This one's... Yeah, D-O-B-B-I-E. This one's D-U-B-B-Y. So it might be Dubby. I like saying Dubby. It sounds better. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we, for this hey, episode, hey, we, 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 we want everybody to like, comment, and subscribe, and join the channel. We've been having some great fun in this Formula One season that we know Max is pretty much going to win every race. Unless well, I was, when, when I was in Thailand, the Chinese Grand Prix happened. Who won the race? Max, Max won that race. Actually, I saw, I saw the race. Saw I got to watch you, that. You got to see it from, I think you were watching it from one of those little water balloons that you put in the, the pool? No, I was, in, I was at the pool and the, yeah. the TV, it was oh. on TV. It was like they I put Formula it One on the TV? Yeah. At, at your location? At the resort, yeah. And I sat there, I was watching. I, I Tough ate, life you're living I had, right there. I had my, my famous, uh, they have this amazing pesto panini sandwich there. And their French fries are really good. Mm. Oh, dude, dude! I always judge a country by their French fries. <laughs> I do. That, there's two things I do. One is I gotta get their French fries to see how they compare to the rest of the world. And two, I always get like their whatever their best dessert is for that country. I get that, and that's how I compare the restaurants. I would just say ice cream. What? Are you, going back to how ruthless the hijinks in Formula One is. Hi, Jinx. What do you think about James Allison? So they just brought him back to the team at Mercedes, and they're already going after Adrian Newey. What Everybody's does that mean? To going him? after Adrian Newey. It's like it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I, I said earlier this year, 
Every team should get Adrian Newey for two or three years. Like rental. Like <laughs> rental. <laughs> like he's on a rental contract. He gets, he gets he's going to go to, I would, I, this is my guesstimation. I think he'll gonna, he's going to go to Ferrari because he's been, he'll, he'll look really good in the red. Everyone looks good. Everyone in the looks good in the red. Lewis is going to look good in the red. The merchandise is going to fly off the shelves when Lewis is in red. It's going to be amazing. I guess so. I'm like, I don't you know. You can't wait. Oh, I just I want Vettel to come back. That's the thing. I want Vettel to go to Mercedes, not stupid for stupid. Would it be so crazy if next year you see Max Verstappen, Helmut Marco, and Adrian Newey all at Mercedes, and then you have you have Ferrari with Hamilton and all the people that they stole for Red Bull and Mercedes. Okay, well, there's there. the, the one problem. Or even even better, let's put Carlos Sainz in the Mercedes. Let's leave Max Verstappen at Red Bull, and then now we have Hamilton at Ferrari. Okay, okay. There's a bunch what of is, there's a bunch of issues with this. Right. First of all, for stupid and uh, Adrian Newey have contracts that go all the way to 2025 or 26. Break those contracts, Mike. They, um, they, I don't think Formula they can one. because they can. the clauses in all these contracts are, are based on uh, is the car any good? And he's he's not going to leave. Max Verstappen He's says, not leaving uh, Red Bull until 2025 at the earliest. If he goes anywhere. Because Adrian Newey well, might, sure might, might stay at, at uh, Red Bull. Well, come to find out, the real reason behind all this, Adrian Newey doesn't want to be there because the PA, we found out that the PA that served... Um, what PA? What, the, you know, assist. the whole thing with uh, Horner. The whole thing. Well, yeah, this is all a power play right so, now. No, but listen, the PA in question, the What's one that... What's a PA? Uh, the personal assistant? Yes, the personal assistant. For, oh, the one that, that's, that's the all one who bullshit. Did the, wait, the one who did the lawsuit, right? Or the one who did the complaint and got fired. She was oh, also... No, no. She's 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 uh, on suspension, but she's getting paid. But she was... No, they, and then they fired her. They haven't fired no, her. No, they did fire her. They when? did. They fired her a long time ago. It was been reported. But let, let me finish my point. My point is we found out that she was also the PA for Adrian Newey. And the reason why he's leaving is directly because of how Horner treated her, and he doesn't like it. And that's why that's we're being uh, reported. That's what's being reported. That's why he's leaving. I don't believe any of this sexual harassment thing. No, anyways. but I, listen, there he they had a shared PA, so it was Christian Horner's assistant, but it was also Adrian Newey's assistant. You know, their offices are like a, like two feet away from each other. So I'm just telling you. What, right. what what people are saying and what so if Helmut Marco leaves, there's a a clause in Max Verstappen contract that he can leave. Also, well, he's going to go with uh with Marco wherever Marco goes. But that's probably where for stupid will go. And, and Marco's like eighty. He's eighty years old. Eighty something. years old. I mean, I don't know. The whole thing. See, this whole thing is a power play. Yes, it's all about the Thai people who own the team, uh, like Horner. The, all the everybody else are the Austrians who are for st- stupid and Marco, right? And I think Adrian Newey is stuck in the middle. I think that's why all the speculation about him leaving, yeah, is because he's probably going to leave. There's there's way too many rumors. Uh, yeah, there's going way on. too many rumors. Way too many. Yeah, uh, but I, th- I, but it's like one of those things. It's just a rumor until it's a fact. So. Yeah. You know, and who knows? He might stay at Red Bull. This whole thing might work itself out. I also heard that Papa Stroll has offered him a gazillion dollars. Of to course, come because he Martin. he he's got that Amarco money. They just bought a chunk of the team, the Aston Martin team. So it it's gonna be crazy that it's it's there's so many seats available. Hulkenberg's already confirmed to go to Audi next year, mm-hmm. and. It's going to be interesting to see who else goes with him over there. Is I it think going to Botas be Carlos Sainz? Is going to be a, no, is, Botas is going to stay there. I think. But it, also, I've heard Ocon could go there too. So Ocon's not any good. Neither. I'm just telling you what, what I've heard. Ocon's not going to the Audi team. What is moving on? 
What is your conspiracy theory that you want to share? I was like, you I, got this I, conspiracy I just, theory. I figured, I figured out And you've been cooking something. up in the lab. You've been trying to I, figure it out. I was watching a documentary on the Mercedes team. Okay. And I forgot that Ross Braun and Nick Fry, who used to run the Honda team, and then they were the Braun team, right. and then Mercedes came in and bought the team right. from both of those guys. So they both owned a chunk of the team. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones who set up the Mercedes team. Okay. And just as the team got good, they both got elbowed out the door. Correct. And then Ross Braun became the the Formula One like technical guy. He did. And he set up Mercedes for what's going on right now. This is my conspiracy theory. Oh. Think about it. He went okay. out and made a car that he knew Adrian knew he was just going to dominate the world with and stuck it to Mercedes. And he did that because they elbowed him out. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They elbowed, they elbowed him out the door. Yeah. I like that theory, Mike. Oh, I like it a lot because it makes sense. How like, drunk were you when you came up with this theory? I was dead sober. No, you weren't. Yeah, no I way. Was, I was watching, you were not dead sober. No I way. Was in, I, was in, I was in Thailand and I was like in the middle of the day and it was hot. So I went to the room and I turned the air conditioning on. And I turned YouTube on, and I saw that little <laughs> the documentary. But it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Because they went to a ground effect car. Like, what the hell? Nobody else had any chance. Look at, all, look at how bad all the cars are compared to the Red Bull. They're like, horrible compared they're, to the it's Red It's like, the, especially the Mercedes, that first year just was doing this all the way. Yeah, the porpoising. You but know, all the cars were porpoising. So Except I there. think, and then Ross Brown, once he put the uh, the the regulations in, into effect, knowing it, it, it wouldn't change until 2026, mm-hmm. and then he left. <laughs> <laughs> so I that's like Mike's that. conspiracy I like theory. That. I like that theory, Mike. I love it. Okay, what's next on the hip parade? Who is going to win this Miami Grand Prix race? Or do we even have to come up with a winner? I mean, I think. Well, uh, gonna win. I think. This is going to be Logan Sargent's <laughs> first W. You mean it's going to be the one where he finally scores a point other than, you know, a penalty to get him a point like in Austin? Well, this is probably going to be his last race. Too. I think so, too. This, They're either going to put a, I think, it's is it Berman? Berman. Ollie Berman. Oliver Berman. Uh, no, Ollie's going to Haas next year. That's yeah. That's what they're saying now that uh, Hulkenberg is leaving. That they would put Ollie Berman in there, but also I'm um, no. Is it Lawson who might go to the? No, the I, I think Kimmy Antonelli might come in. Nah, he's, he's they, they, he needs he needs time and uh, they, why why? What do you mean why? I almost think that if they put Kimmy in the car right now, he's going to be faster than Logan Sargent. Right now, oh, everybody's going to be faster than so Logan Sargent. So then why so why wait? Logan Sargent isn't that good. He, but he, think about this, Mike. They're talking about going after Max Verstappen, but they were also talking about, well, we got to have room for Kimmy. We got to put Kimmy into an alien to see if they bring in Max Verstappen. Does that mean that George Russell is going to be out if they bring to get Kimmy into an alien to see? Well, I Russell, mean, you see Russell's all pre- the- Russell's pretty good. He doesn't pretty good. He's not great. He's, I think he's, he's pretty not, good. He's nah, one of he's, he's one of the younger drivers. He's all not. He's he's the worst of the younger drivers. No, he's not. You, is he better than Norris? Yeah. No. No. He no. beat Norris in no. GP two. He's, he's not better than Norris, dude. Is he better than Carlos Sainz? Well, Carlos Sainz not one of the younger ones now. He's thirty. Is he better than Charles Leclerc? No. I think no. they're all they're all about the is same. Is he better than Alex Albon? No. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. He's the fourth one on that train, man. They're all pretty He's good. He's the caboose, dude. Remember those guys? He's the caboose. All, Come all on. came up together in Cardi. I don't and care. Yeah. I don't care if they all came up in high school. I don't care if they held hands in junior high. I'm telling you that there's no way he's better than. He's pretty good. He's not better than Norris. Anyways, what's the next? He's not better than. <laughs> he's not better than. Carlos Sainz, he's not better than Alex Albon. He's not better than Charles Leclerc. He's he's the the fifth guy. He's the fifth wheel. If they were going on a date, he'd be the guy. Like everybody'd be like, "Oh man, we don't have room for you, bro." Whoever has the best car wins. The end. Who's gonna win the Miami again? Before you went off. Well, on your unless tangent? unless a brick falls from outer space and hits for stupid in the head, he's probably gonna. 
It's just going to be a dominant weekend. All right. Really. Who's going to come in second? Oh, does Checo have a chance at winning this race? Maybe. I think he does. He always has a chance. He's good at the... Uh, and Checo's always good at the street courses for some reason, so... I think... I think Checo has a very good race. Give me your top five. Come on. And and there's going to be a sprint race. You know that, right? Oh, God, I hate these stupid sprint I races. I like the sprint races. Well, they make no sense. They have a sprint race on Saturday, but that they they do two qualifying sessions, one for the sprint race and one for the main on Sunday. Right. When I used to race, oh, we, yeah. have, oh, yeah. <laughs> we have... The sprint race is... However you finish in the sprint race, that's where you started in the main. I know. So I don't know why that. they do... Well, why they have a sprint race if it doesn't do, do anything for the race on Sunday. It has nothing to do with it. It's almost like where you finish in the sprint race should be where you qualify. Well, it should be where you start the, the yeah. main. Yeah, but they so. don't do it that way. It makes no sense. Well, they want two qualifiers. They want to make it exciting TV. And I think... Boring is not... Uh, I think it's better than watching... I think it's better than watching practice, man. No one wants to watch practice. Nobody wants to watch first and second practice, dude. Nobody wants to watch it. Boring. It is. Give me your top five anyway. Because you always. I don't have a top five. It, it, right, it, tell it, me who's going to win. All right. You said Max Verstappen's going to win. And then who's going to be second? Checo. Who's going to be third? I don't know. One of the Ferraris. Pick which one. Okay. Leclerc. All right. And then fourth? Lando. Uh, fifth? Maybe one of the Mercedes. Ahead of Carlos Sainz? Mm. Which one? George Russell or Lewis Hamilton? <sighs> it depends, because the last few races, the Mercedes have been doing two, two completely different strategies. So Yeah, I don't know why. It's... Well, they're trying to... Supposedly, the Mercedes has a new car coming, too. They do. They have a new floor. There's a no, lot. No, they, have a, they have a lot. They have a new car basically coming. They have a lot of upgrades coming, Mercedes, and so do a lot of other teams. I, think I don't know why. Some are coming. Ferrari's doing that blue. That's going to be cool. They're doing what? That, their live livery is going to be blue this weekend for the Miami Vice. Why? Because they're. Uh, what, what rock have you been hiding under? Haven't you watched? Don't you see that they have the blue overalls and the, the blue I didn't shirts? I not see any of that crap. Oh. Why? What are you talking you about? Why? Dude, They're going to paint the car blue, It's going to be blue. Yeah, they signed with HP. They're going to have blue. Oh, they on. got a new sponsor? They have new sponsors. Uh-huh. The main team sponsors uh, Hewlett Packard, HP. And t- this weekend, it's going to be blue. You didn't know that from Miami Vice? Mm. Do you do any research for our show, Mike? No. Uh, yeah. I did come up with a conspiracy theory, though. <sighs> That's it, I'm going off off the rails here. Oh, oh here we I, go. I think Checo's going to win this race. He, it's always a street race that he's in contention to win, and this might be the race that he pulls it off. I'm going with Checo for for the win. He's going to actually get pole position too. He's going to qualify. He's going to out qualify Max this race. All right, all right. And then I'm going to go with Hamilton ahead of uh, Russell. I'm going to go with Charles Leclerc ahead of Carlos Sainz. I'm going to go with Norris ahead of Piastri, who, you know, Piastri's doing all right, but I don't think he's, he's – Norris is on another level right now. I don't – last year, I think Piastri, there were races he was a lot more competitive, and right now, I think Norris is just really handing it to him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm the – the McLaren is like – it depends. It's like one week – the Ferrari is the second best car, and then the next week the, the McLaren's the second best car, and then the Mercedes is just like, well, they're behind Aston Martin. They're behind everybody. They're, well, they're not behind everybody, but they're behind but they're like Aston the Martin. total mid pack. T- they went from number one to the mid pack team. So well, they're I, we've been saying that for two years. They're a mid pack team. Yeah, and they have to have. Well, no, last year they were the the number two car. They were the number two car. Yes, but they're not. They're, they're like the number four or five car now. So they, I think they, they're the number five car. This even year. though they have the best looking car this year, it doesn't work. You think they're the best looking car? Oh, the Mercedes is a good looking car, but it better doesn't than work. the Hulk green. What that Hulk neon green? What Hulk? The steak, steak F1. <laughs> you don't like their car? Uh, I like their colors on it the car. It looks cool. It's going to look cool in Miami because of the neon, you know? 
It goes with the theme. I think the Miami race should be at night. I'm, I can't believe I'm surprised yeah. they haven't done a night race yet, there yet. I think it would be. Because it's too hot in the daytime to do a race there, so. Yeah, I think a, a night race in Miami would be cool. Because last year, the, all the, neon the track temperature was 120 degrees or something. It's insane. That's a race I'm going to, I think that's a race I'll get down to. Not, not this year, but. I think if it was a night race, I might go. A night race would be awesome. But this is, the plane tickets are so goddamn expensive. Dude, I though. looked on the plane ticket. It's yeah. like thirteen hundred. I was just like on the whim. I was like, huh, I wonder if I should just go to Miami and check out the race. For thirteen hundred dollars. Thirteen hundred dollars. That's that's too Dude, much. Dude, it was it was cheaper that's to go much. to Thailand. Yeah, that's thir- I went to Japan for almost the same price. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous, dude. And to go to Amsterdam right now, it's a thousand dollars to do a one stop trip there. But for some reason, it's fifteen hundred dollars to get a thousand dollars. It's fifteen hundred to go to Amsterdam if you want the nonstop ticket, and thirteen hundred dollars to go to Miami. That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense to me. It used to be like two or three hundred dollars round trip to go to. Uh, I think to, it was like three four hundred bucks to go to Miami round trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went to Austin last year, it was it was the same. It was nine hundred bucks. Yeah, that's that's way too much money to go to Austin. I, I was going to. I've gone to races there. It was like. 300 bucks 258 yeah. bucks and like if it was 400 bucks i thought it was high but I, last year i thought like you say it was what a thousand bucks 900 bucks i mean they gouge and now they know that okay formula one's going to be going around this time so all the airlines increase their fares it's not, well i i it's think i gouging. think the problem with the airlines is they don't have as many flights as they used to have they have to make up the money somewhere mm. and when i was at every plane i've been on when i mean it's packed i mean there's they have people sitting on the wings. There's so many people on that goddamn plane. Who, I, if who doesn't ha- if tell me what racer is out of Formula One before the end of the season, Mike? There has to be a couple of them. Well, Logan's gonna be. This is gonna be his last race. Okay, who else? And if Ricciardo doesn't start kicking uh, Yuki's ass, He's but he did last time. He did, he did much better at the last race. Um, Except he, you know, got taken out. That's okay. He was just he was faster than uh, Yuki the whole the whole the whole weekend by a lot. So for for one, he qualified ahead of Yuki by a lot by like five or six positions. But he crashed out. In the first but the, lap. both both of the cars didn't make it to the end. No, so. no, because yeah, because Magnuson crashed into Yuki. Yeah, and so uh, no one's gonna. That's the the point I'm trying to make is. There was like a blowtorch pointed at Ricardo. He can mm-hmm. he cannot he has to go faster than than Yuki now if he wants to get the Red Bull seat, which is going to be there's going to be a, vac- a vacancy at Red Bull. There is going to why though? I, I still think Checo should keep the seat. Oh, I I don't I think Checo. It's a, keep Checo the seat. just said he wants a three year contract. Yeah, but that's all part of negotiation. He says three, they say one, they settle that too. Mm. There's no way they're going to get rid of Checo because they've won the championship yeah, every year since he's been there. Yeah, they can't. Now, we also have, we're going to do two shows this week. So this previews, we're going to put this preview out, I think, Thursday. But we're going to have, for tomorrow, we're going to have an interview we did with Alex Vogel, who races for the OnlyFans <laughs> racing team. There's an OnlyFans. There's racing an OnlyFans team? racing team. Is, the do they 43. race naked? Is that no? They, he <laughs> races in GT America for the Mercedes AMG racing team, and we went out to Sonoma when they're having testing, and we did an interview with Alex Vogel, and we're gonna post that this week. Also, we did the interview in the trailer, so. The bad thing about doing an interview in the trailer is the trailer's on, so you have the trailer noises in the background, and we did the best we could to get rid of the trailer noises, but there's going to be some noise. I mean, it's it's a, it's a, it's on the circuit. You know, we're doing an interview. It's not in the media room. It's in his trailer. So there'll, there'll be a little bit of background noise. So I want everybody to go and Who's check Who's Alex out. Vogel? He, I just told you who he was. I, oh. I just said he's a, he races. He's a driver for Mercedes Benz and GT America. Huh? What's wrong? Didn't you just hear me talk about it? I don't know who it is though. But, but he, he's a driver. Do you, Did, do you know every driver in every series? Not really. Okay then. So what, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What I'm just doing? asking you who he well, is. I'm telling you who he is. All right. Never mind. 
<laughs> okay, so what's this interview going to be about? Oh, my Lord. We're going to... Well, why, now that we've brought it up, now that you brought it up, the interview's about how he got how he got into racing how does he juggle his racing life with his family because he has like five kids and a wife oh, jesus how, how does he juggle that when you know they're in college and high school and he, he runs a company and he's like one of the biggest uh lobbyists on on the hill in, in washington dc so how does he juggle all these hats so it's a fascinating how he got into racing. So it's a fascinating story. Then you get a little insight about his racing style and how you race in GT America. So it's a fascinating interview. And PJ joined me out there in Sonoma. He so actually showed up for something? He did. He had, It's the first time PJ showed up live <laughs> for anything. Usually he's just calling in on the phone. So stay tuned for that interview, everyone. If you want to get some insight into racing in a different series, and from time to time we'll have other interviews with other racers or other drivers in the has GT he, Has America he won any races? Series. Did you just yawn? I want to tell you about yawning. You just because just you're still jet lagged. Doesn't mean you gotta yawn on camera on the microphone. Well, you can cut it out. I mean, you know, I could, but I'm not because I want everyone to see how unprofessional you are. You know what? It's about lunchtime. I gotta eat lunch. Sherman gotta, has to eat lunch, to eat and he's gotta have dessert. And I have to have a, a appointment with my acupuncturist. That Again, morning. you're still you're still. Yeah, I got two stuff? more. I got two more. Uh, Does that stuff thing. work? Yeah, I think it works. I have two more visits, and then I'm gonna up for another twelve. And hopefully uh, we'll get some progress on my leg and my back, and you know, feel good. I'm surprised you didn't you didn't take a, you know workman's comp. I did. They didn't they put me back to work and they shouldn't have, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, you don't do nothing but stand there during. Oh. I mean, do, do, you you like organize the whole thing when you go to a fire, right? No, no, I was on a freaking four story roof. Uh, just a couple of, on Saturday for fire. was it on fire? Yes, on a four story peak roof. You know, people. You know, we normalize in the fire world things that are super dangerous, like being on a four story roof. That's kind of dangerous. On a peak, with <laughs> nothing on the sides of you, is super dangerous, dude. And just being there, I'm not a roofer or anything. You know, so, why? Why were you up there? Shouldn't you have the kids doing that stuff? Well, uh, it's. <sighs> we're we're not, why are we talking about this I have on no a Formula idea. One, our Formula One channel here? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? I Did think, we get I, off track? I think we totally got off track. I'm gonna take that part out. No, you should leave it you in. There. Leave it in. Yeah, what the hell? Anyhow, everybody, thanks for joining in for this episode of the preview of the Miami Grand Prix, and join us for the post Grand Prix analysis of the Miami Grand Prix, and and for everybody out there driving. Keep on racing. Everybody. Keep on trucking. Mother truckers.